What's going on? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this episode of CF Talks. Oh, it's quiet in the building right now. Let me say it again. Welcome to this episode of CF Talks, baby. My name is Rudy LaRose, and I am in the building tonight. <laughs> Ooh, building tonight, man. And I'm excited to be here in the presence of greatness in the presence of conquerors and in the presence of spider moms you know what i'm saying like you gonna have to just hold up to see what we're talking about that's right we got spider mom in the building that's my personal name but she carries many hats and she's gonna give you fire tonight with this great conversation so if you're ready to have a conversation to us with us i need you to do me a huge favor first and foremost i need to i need you to put in in the comment section where you are watching from, what city you representing, you know, all that good stuff, you know, whether you're from Africa, or you're from Italy, or you're from Cuba, man, or you're from Japan, China, Jamaica, Bahamas. Why is it every time people say Jamaica, they can't say it straight? Like Jamaica, like just say it straight, bro. You know what I'm saying? But wherever you represent, make sure you put it in the comment section. And if you don't have StreamYard in your Facebook, be sure to put in www.streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. Because otherwise, we don't get to see who is actually making the, the, uh, the, the comments. Also, if you want your friends, your family, your coworkers, your peoples to see this, Make sure you go to uh, to uh, confidencefactor.youtube.com. Confidence, I'm sorry, youtube.confidencefactor.com so everybody can see what's going on in the building. And finally, if you are digging what we're saying, if you are resonating with us, mi gentes, put in hashtag heart level in the comment section. Hashtag heart level, or if you're watching the replay, put in hashtag replay. Are you ready to have a great show? Because I am certainly looking forward to the show. I've been waiting for this young lady forever to step into the man cave. That's right, she in the man cave, y'all. Woo, and it's gonna be fire. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Tonight, we are talking about how to, you ready? Are y'all ready? Are you ready? We are talking about how to establish an environment of leadership. I'm talking about establishing an environment of leadership where you can help people grow. With that being said, I wanna bring in my partners into this conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Mr. Lamont and Bobby B in the building, as always. What's going on, fellas? What's going on, what's going on, what's going on? What's oh, up, man, what's I'm up? I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be here, man. Hey, just finished another week of hosting, strategizing, networking, and all that good stuff, man. Your boy tired. Your boy is still tired. But hey, we're going to keep it going, man. What's up with y'all? Talk to him, Lamont. Oh, man, I switched you already <laughs> off, bro. Okay, well, let's do it then, man. Guys, welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome to CF Talks. This is where we have heart-level conversations that actually lead to transformation. And what we do That's is right. we help men to pursue their purpose by developing their confidence factor. Where's my background music, man? I was vibing in that, man. I felt like I was putting my hoodie on. And Come, on, and the Come on, Mr. Producer. Come on, Mr. Producer. Come on, there you go. Coming to the stage, okay. your boy Bobby D from the Bronx. Let's do this. Bobby B. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, guys, today's a great day, and it is the best day of my life. Best Can't day. do nothing with yesterday. Tomorrow is not promised, so I got to live in the moment and fulfill what I came to do today. Anyway, guys, we're, we're here and we are so excited about tonight. What we first want to talk to you and let you know, guys, what we do is we help men to pursue their purpose by developing their confidence factor. And how do we do that? We use our three smart principles. These are the three confidence factor smart principles. You won't find this anywhere else. Principle number one is self mastery. That's right. Self mastery. You know, the Greeks had a saying, the Greeks said to um, to know thyself. And when we talk about self-mastery, what we're talking about is self-control. You know, one of the things they say about men is that men are either usually, they, we, we got two emotions, right? Either we like angry or highly sexualized. But here at CF, we're about unleashing our riches. Riches is about 
the whole man, the whole man. So we'll talk to you a little bit about that in a few minutes. The second principle that we use is accountability. Accountability, they said if you set goals, you're more likely to reach those goals if you have a group of peers that will surround you and help you to promote and push and go after those different goals that you have. And our third principle here at Confidence Fact, our third principle is nothing more than resources and tools. In order to do it, you got to have the right resources and you got to have the right tools for the job. Everybody knows a mechanic needs his mechanic bag. Contractors need the contractor tools. Here at CF, man, we use books. We use books and other men who have stories that can help share those stories with us and help us to lead the way. So those are the three smart principles that we use here at Confidence Factor. And remember guys, we are always fighting against the lid, the lid, that's right. We found out that guys are feeling lonely, isolated, and feeling like they don't matter, like they're just an ATM machine. And guess what? That's not true here, man. Everybody is valuable. And if nobody told you today, in the words of Dr. Love Jones, I'm gonna tell you like he told me today, you matter you are valuable so keep that in the back of your mind lamont i'm coming over to you brother talk to these brothers fill them up encourage them inspire them do your thing baby man i'm just so happy to be here so happy to be in the man cave you know uh being a part of this community it's all about unleashing our riches right unleashing our riches and we're not just talking about money we're talking about relationships income community contribution health education and spirituality those principles, those things that will help us succeed in life to actually become rich, the whole man. And so I am just happy to be here. I'm happy to have our, our guests. And, you know, today I had a, a I was driving from home from a networking event. And for some reason, this idea came in my mind that your future is in your follow through. Mm. Mm, your future is in your follow through. That was the download that I have. I'm like, man, how many things did I not follow through? So 2023 for me is about follow through and, you know, being a part of this, this community, we help men follow through. So I'm excited about this conversation, excited to be here. Uh, so yeah, brother, let's, let's make this happen. Excellent. Rudy, man. What's up, man. Tell me what you see in 2023. <laughs> You're on mute, brother. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. You know what I see in 2023? I see a lot less of this, okay? I see a lot less of that. That's what I see in 2023. A lot less of this and a lot more of, of conversation, connections, and engagement. Guys, when I was uh, doing this thing that last weekend, you know, I saw a lot of people coming through and, you know, just trying to better themselves. But I also realized that it's one thing to come into the room, but it's another thing to connect while you're in the room. And so I made it, I was very purposeful in connecting with the right people in the room. And let me tell you, I mean, from the, the gentleman who owns, I'm sorry, the gentleman who oversees 800 employees, you know, uh, uh, he runs a, 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 air, um, a government uh, uh, contracting company. He, he runs an IT company like myself. He runs a, a, a real estate investment company. I mean, this guy is all over the place. And I'm looking to have him all, also at CF. So just connecting with the right people, you know, for me this year is really about strategic partnerships. And this is the reason why I have this young lady here today because of this set strategic partnership that I'm out to do this year. Boom. SPs, baby. You sound you sound like you're ready to roll, man. You ready to do I, this? I'm ready brother. to roll. I'm ready to roll. And Shout out to Mr. Baruti. Yes. Nas Nasakiri. I hope I said that right. <laughs> I, I you you bold, brother. I wouldn't have made the attempt. You you, you tried. <laughs> Hopefully, we get some respect <laughs> for the triumph. Yep. And shout yep. out to Darian Hill. Who's finishing up some yeah. solid, solid appointments tonight, man? These guys, we getting busy. I'm glad we got so many yeah, guys we can cover. Javon, shout out to Javon, Doctor Love Jones, who is not here, but he's also in the building, finishing up some appointments as well. Also, want to give a big yeah. bold shout out to to Wayne Moody. Uh, Wayne is the dream builder, and he's probably the I don't know where's builder. Wayne now, man. Is he believes he he stay moving. He stay. He, I don't Jay, know where Wayne, no, Wayne's all over. I, 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 Wayne is going to need his own private jet. I'm certain right. of it. Right. Certain, <laughs> right. 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 Okay. So yeah. remember, remember your boy yeah. Bobby B said it first. So Wayne, 
make sure up front, you know, make sure. I get it right. <laughs> Shout out to James James Hewitt, the voice who couldn't be couldn't be in here tonight but uh i want to give a shout yep. out to the voice also chris ward i want to give a shout out give me some of the guys the unleash your riches guys who else is yeah there? man uh I, jerry I, I shout, shout out to jerry out. Shout, michael out to stowe, Mike. bro. shout out to john ebron michael stowe you know what i'm saying yeah. stowe uh michael shout out to john ebron in the building shout out to uh Edson. man there's so Edson. many guys Edson. and we Edson, yep. yep. Edson, Michelle, yes. We got we got a little waiting list yep. going. We got a couple of guys reached out and was like, "Yo, when y'all gonna have your unleash your riches?" I'm waiting, bro. Yeah. You know, tell them, Bobby. I'm tell them what's up, bro. Tell them, tell them about bro, that, we, man. We, what's the date? What's the date? I ain't gonna lie, I ain't got the date in front of me. I, I put you know, I put we ain't got the, the date, but so. you can tell them what it's all about, though. You can tell them what it's all about. Man, unleash your riches. Lamont broke it down earlier. It's basically we focus on the whole man. But this year, we are specifically going to go after income. If you have an income goal that you're going to be after for the year of 2023, and you want someone to help hold you accountable and be a part of a group of guys that are all pursuing their purpose in life and developing their confidence factor and unleashing their riches, then you want to be with us. I believe we're going to start sometime in uh it was either late February or March. I got to check the calendar. Right. And for, you, right. for those of you that don't know, your boy Bobby B, I put everything in the calendar. I let my calendar tell me what to do because if I try to rely on my memory, there's too much going on. I can't do it. So it's all in the calendar. But yeah, guys, you, we're going to have the Unleash Your Riches. You don't have the journal joint. I do, you don't have I the do, journal joint, you know bro. <laughs> Yo, you know what's crazy? I'm going to give a shout out to Lamont, too, because here's my, here's my journal. But I don't put the appointments in my journal. I actually journal in my journal, right? In your journal. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to Lamont, right? I, I'm going to give you a little free game right here, because this, uh, this is free game. I, I, I don't even think hey. I'm supposed to be saying this, bro. Yo, that, that comes with a price tag. Uh, but go ahead. Share. I'm, I'm going to give it to him. I'm a, hey, somebody blessed me when I was coming up. So I'm going to bless him. I'm going to bless him. You know what I mean? Hey, Lamont, Lamont gave me one thing to journal, uh, Rudy. Lamont said, write down, I am so happy and grateful now. Money comes to me. In ex unexpected, it expected in unexpected ways, and so I've been mm -hmm. writing that. Yo, I got to be me. Can I just be me? Look, go, I've been writing that shit down every day, bro. <laughs> I've been writing that shit down every, oh, just about every out of seven days. I write it down five days, right? And I promise you, mm -hmm. I had like two weeks where I was just getting money. I, I had it wasn't on the it wasn't on the books. It was just random. It came from nowhere. I didn't anticipate it. It wasn't part of my budget. Nothing. For like two mm. weeks straight, I just kept getting cash app. And I was like, yo, this thing is really working, bro. It, it was freaking me out at one point. You were thinking money come in, you just relax, right? But it wasn't relaxed. I was like, yo, I'm writing it down and it's actually working, right? So shout out to Lamont for that, man. Appreciate you for that, Lamont. Shout, yes, sir, yes, shout sir. out to Bobby B for that government site that got me a hundred some dollars. Shout out to that. How about that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Money just sitting there waiting for me. Oh, bro. so you want him to <laughs> drop that <laughs> one? Uh -huh. <laughs> Hey, you know that's how I make my money. That's how I make my money. You, you know what's crazy though? You know what's crazy? You would think that calling people up and telling them you got money sitting in an account, they'd be like, "Yo, let's do mm -hmm. this right now." Nah. nah, I called mm -hmm. a lady the other day. She had forty one G's. 41,000 sitting in the account. I tried to put it on. She was like, this ain't real. I was like, oh my God. I was like, God, <laughs> help me talk to these people. <laughs> help me talk to these people. Imagine. No, for real. Because how I got turned on to that, my homegirl, she had four G's sitting in an account for like 10 years. Mm. She mm. got the paperwork. They sent her the paperwork and she threw it away. She was like, this is ain't real. And, and the whole time wow. she had like 4,000. I was like, yo, that's crazy, bro. But hey, man, what can I tell you? But shout out to Rudy, man. Thank you but, for blessing me with that, bro. <laughs> but see, that's life too, man. How many times we, we see people that, you know, not people, let me just be real. How many times I struggle in life? You know what I'm saying? And I got the play, the, pay, the, the check is sitting in front of me, but I refuse to sign it. You know what I'm saying? I've written, I mean, it's written out. My name's on it. You know what I'm saying? The bank is legit. The account numbers are legit. But I refuse to sign the check and go out there and do what I'm supposed to do, man. So that's what I compare that to. Like, there are people out there waiting on you, waiting on you to show up. When they got the they got the check in hand. It's signed. It's, it's ready for you. But you're not showing up. 
And so mm. I, I want to encourage each and every one that is at the sound of my voice, as Andy Enrique says, show up for your life because if you don't, nobody else will, nobody right? Else will. Nobody else man. will, man. So show up, get that check, man. Get that money and do the things that you're supposed to do to, to really, hey, there you go. Do the things you're supposed to do. Shout out to Andy Enriquez and the building always. My brother doing big things, going up and up. This guy's just blown up anyway, uh, uh, all over the place. But but li but literally, you got to be able to show up, and that is the one thing too, Bobby. Is that I decided this year that I'm I'm coming out the curtains. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm coming out behind the shadows. You know what I mean? Like Spider Man, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put myself out there. You know what I mean? And just do what God has called me to do. Show up in the purpose that I'm supposed to, man. Because I believe that's where you will see your pros your 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 abundance. You know, grow. That's where mm -hmm. people will say, "Man, I need you." Matter of fact, when I was doing this this event last weekend, so many people walked up to me and said, "Hey, I need to connect with you. I see what you're doing. I love your energy when you come in the room. I need to connect with you." So many people were saying that to me, and so yeah, man, let's do this. Y'all ready? Let's do. It. Listen, you've been bigging up the Spider Man. I want to. Hey. hey, listen, this hey. better be good, bro. Listen. That's all. It better be good. <laughs> you've been bigging her up something great. You heard me? Okay, then. So I want to hear what she got to say. Oh my gosh! Let me tell you something about 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 the, this young lady coming to the stage. You know, again, y'all know with me intros, I don't like the whole uh, official intro. She went to such school and blah blah blah. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it heart level. I'm gonna keep it two hundred today. I'm gonna keep it two hundred. This young lady, at the age that she is right now, has done so many things in her life. So many people she's she's touched, so many um, kids and youth and people of authority, so many connections that she's made that I, I don't even know how, it, how, I don't even know how it was possible to even get her here, first of all. Second of all, the fact that she is constantly holding it down, having event after event after event and making the moves that she's making she is somebody who we need to know. She is somebody, you know how you have that, you know how you have your, your contacts list and then you got your favorites list and then you got you got your, your favorite, favorite list? Yeah, she's one of those people that you need to have on your speed dial because not only she gets this done, she gets stuff done, but she is one of the, she's one of the people that I love the most that really has a heart to grow and expand herself and those around her. She's huge on leadership, huge on, 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 on making sure that people get exactly what they need. And she is here tonight with us. Ladies, that's right. Ladies, I know y'all watching tonight. And gents, make some noise for my homegirl, Miss Charmaine Postal in the building tonight. Look at that, look at that. Look, they're going crazy over there. They're going crazy over there. <laughs> oh, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Um, what a introduction, quite introduction. So thank you, thank you for having me here today. Um, thank you for giving that, me the opportunity to speak with the men. Um, of course, I love speaking with the men. I love getting men's perspective, but an opportunity where we have created a space for men, male um, environment, give, and have given me that opportunity to share that space. I am honored and I am very grateful. So thank you. My pleasure, my pleasure. This is this is definitely a community for the men, but it is inspired by the ladies. I'm not even gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? I'm not ladies like stop talking to us. Go find another guy to talk to and tell about your next idea. Okay. So you are here tonight, and I'm super thankful. And I want to know first of all. Who is Charmaine Postal? Who is Charmaine? What is she made of? Charmaine Postal. Who is <laughs> Charmaine Postal is formerly Charmaine Lucian. Or if you are Haitian, mm -hmm. um, I am Haitian American. So, um, Charmaine Lucien is how you would say it. So 1804, hello. Um, <laughs> from Boynton Beach, Florida. Um, by way of my uh, Haitian mother immigrant, um, 
born and raised in Boynton Beach, Seacrest, forever my home. Um, Charmaine moved to Boca at, immediately after high school, honestly, and have been there ever since. Um, I have four kids, and I am a forever student, a leader that is forever learning. Um, mm -hmm. I am for sure a change maker, if I can say myself say so myself um and i'm just all around i am just someone here to give a honest shoulder to and to become mm -hmm. definitely me um in so many go. words but all caught up with the uh accolades I, i'm just someone who is here to serve to lead to give back to pour mm -hmm. into others that they pour into my cup that's awesome. That's awesome. Take us back a little bit to when you were younger. When did you know that you were made to be a leader? What were some of the things that, you know, what was maybe happening amongst your friends? Maybe your family said something, maybe something that's like was a defining moment in your life where you like, you know what? I'm not this, I'm not like everybody else. I'm different. Um, ooh, I, I think I would have to go back to my elementary school years um my elementary school years i wore you know of course the big dresses with the tennis shoes so i was made fun a lot i had the binoculars in my head um <laughs> or binoculars as they was called it and i think i had some other friends who would be the same they would look just like me and people would make mm -hmm. fun of us it really didn't bother me i mean because my mom we didn't it, it wasn't something that you really talked about at home so i didn't find a problem mm -hmm. with it and the people in the community didn't really care um so when i went to school and people made fun of us i was the one who stood up for bullies and my teachers mm. always <laughs> and i i mean and i would fight i would i, I would actually uh -oh. bullies for bullying other people or making fun of other mm -hmm. people and um mm -hmm. i i can remember my elementary school teacher sharing how um, if I could contain my um, behavior and my attitude and all of that aggression, I would be a great leader because I like leading people. I'm not a follower. Mm. Um, my wow. first, um, I didn't really know what she meant, but um, mm -hmm. as I got older and I defined and, and really read the word leadership, I totally understood what she meant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you go, you do your thing, you knock out a couple of guys, a couple of girls, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to uh Bubba. You know what I mean? I hope you listen, I hope you learned your lesson, bro. You know, she was trying to let you off the hook, but um so you go into high school and then eventually I'm sure you go into your, your higher education. What was that like for you coming out of high school, trying to figure out what you wanted to do? What was, take us into that that container um, for a minute. So I didn't really know what to do, um, which we'll get a little into the conversation about leadership um, later. When we talk about leadership, whether you're born with it or whether it's something to be learned, um, I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I was a leader. Um, and quite honestly, just going back to my middle school and my high school years, wanting to be part of um, leadership opportunities, whether it was SGA, uh, class president, government, and other groups, um, I was actually a bit afraid to join those groups because I didn't think mm. I um, possessed that leadership skills, that those leadership skills that my um, colleagues or my the other students had. You know, being a president or even being a secretary, you know, you need to know the words like quorum and you need to know the words like, you know, what a secretary do. I, to be honest, I didn't yeah. know what was a secretary, what was a treasure, um, what was tabling, um, what did tabling mean? I didn't know Robert's Bill of Order for sure until I was well past um, <laughs> high school and into um, undergrad. I didn't. So mm -hmm. I think going all the way and fast forwarding to those terms, um, I was afraid. I was afraid of who mm -hmm. I was and who I was becoming, I would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm so, you know, 36 years what? old and becoming. <laughs> I said 36 and years so, old and I am still becoming. 
All right, all right. So going through that fear, what was what was it like for you when you finally made the change? Like, you know what? I know I'm afraid. I know I'm not sure, but I'm just going to move forward anyway. Was there somebody who inspired you? Was there an event that happened in your life? I know, you know, having kids, did that change for you? Because now you were getting into leadership on your own as far as, home, you know, running a home and, and of course, your career at the same time. You want to know when I first stepped foot in leadership and understood that I was a leader through training mm -hmm. um, was my son is 16. My oldest son is 16 years old right now. It was when he turned five, maybe five or six years old, going into kindergarten, um, right around the kindergarten first grade mark. And I was um, introduced to PTA. I was advocating what now I know that word means advocating. I was advocating for my son. Uh, son school. I, I didn't understand how um, kids, I didn't understand how you can kind of select your school. And um, mm -hmm. I mean, little idea based on the families that lived in Boca Raton, and they shared how you can actually, um, you know, live in a particular house, and that's the school that your child will go to. And that's how we actually picked our child's school, believe it or not. And I was at the school, and there was just something that wasn't right at the school. And I did not know what to do. I complained about it. And there was this parent teacher group. And so I went to the meeting. And from that moment on, they said, oh, you should be the VP of volunteers. And I was volunteered. I, I had no idea. I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. I was like, a VP, right. vice president of what? I get paid for this? Right. <laughs> um, right. And of course, that wasn't the case. But they sent me to this leadership training. And I have to shamelessly give this plug for PTA, right? Because mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. what for me. Um, I went to this leadership training, which happens to happen every July. And I learned so much from Robert's Rule of Order to how to call a meeting. I mean, to how, pretty much how to run a business because I learned that PTA was mm -hmm. a business. And mm -hmm. that is where, that is what and where I grabbed, uh, um, I grabbed my first, I guess my first whiff of leadership of, wow, this mm -hmm. is leadership. Oh, I can run my own business. If this is what leadership is, I can do this. Um, and right. that is that is where it started for me. I would say, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I think I'm going to stop there. That is where it stopped for me because I have some other <laughs> things. <laughs> All right. I, I got, so I got a question, Roots. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, you know, could you just tapped on it a little bit, right? So I just want to, I want to jump in there. Like, what is leadership and are you born with it or is it something that is cultivated? I mean, that's the obvious question, right? So now, what, that, what's the next question? <laughs> the answer to that question and everyone have their own variations of that question. Um, are leaders born? I don't believe leaders are born. And um, mm -hmm. I, I have various points to say why leaders are not born are not born. First, scientific reasons, because uh, scientifically studies have shown that 30% of leadership um, comes from genetics and 70% comes from being learned. So that's number one, right? Why leaders are not born. Leadership is the action of leading a group of people or an organization. Um, leadership is the ability to, bang, uh, to build and um, maintain healthy relationships. Um, leadership is a state or position of being a leader. So if you are not born into a leadership, uh, in a, into a leader, if you have never seen what a leader does, if no one have really left, never led you, how can you be born? How, I mean, I'm sorry, if, if that wasn't something you was born with, when we're born, we're born with a bottle. We're not born with a bottle in our hands. We learn how to hold a bottle because our parents hold our hands to allow mm -hmm. us to drink the bottle. Um, when we're born, mm -hmm. we're not born with wiping our butts and putting on our clothes. It's taught. It's taught how you um, tie your shoes. So it's the same concept of leadership. Leading a group of people, how can you lead someone that you don't know anything about? How can you lead mm -hmm. individuals that... Um, you don't know their purpose. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good. That's ability, really good. Leadership is the ability to build and maintain healthy relationships. If you don't know or you've never born around 
healthy relationships, how can you possess those characteristics and qualities? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good that's question. That's, and that's a great response to that. And I, I do, I have this question, right? So we establish, and I know you touched on this, but I want to get into more details. We establish that leadership is something you develop, not something that's born. But so what would you say is the thing, what is the process of the cultivating the leadership within a person? Because though they're not born, it's certain traits a person have that you can latch on and say, hey, they got the potential. So how do you determine one's potential and how do you cultivate those natural traits that they may have if you think there's a such thing as a natural traits for a leader? So those natural traits for a leader means uh, so the environment where someone feels empowered. If you yeah. are not creating that space or that environment for someone to feel empowered, how can they feel? How can they feel empowered? Um, that's mm -hmm. what a leader does. They empower other people. So if I'm not creating, and, and maybe I, I'm actually actually I'm going to ask you to repeat your question again because I was going somewhere and then you, there was a point to your question that I did not answer. So if you don't mind, Doctor Love, to answer, ask that question once more. No, I, okay. So you pretty much got to the one part, and then the question I want to know is: so what would be the process? Because you're saying the environment. So what was the process, would you say, to cultivate leadership? I would say the process is having those meaningful, meaningful exchanges, having those healthy relationships and conversations um, and getting to know people. Because if you, for, for example, fostering that environment or fostering a space where someone can lead, uh, where someone would be able to lead you, Let's go into relationships, if we will, right? In an environment, in a, a, a relationship, if you're fostering in an environment where, <laughs> should I go there? Um, go there, please go there, please. That's, we keep it hard over here, go there. So we got 200, as you stated earlier. Okay. Um, when we think about traditional uh, relationship statuses, a man and a woman, correct? Um, women have the, the thought process of a man is supposed to lead. Leadership is in relationship. And if you are not fostering the ability, if you're not giving that man the ability to get to know you, if you're not giving that man the ability to um, lead you in whatever capacity, because that's what you say, he's supposed to lead you. So is he supposed to only lead you to the bank or is he supposed to lead you financially, um, mentally, emotionally? Um, is he supposed to lead you? How else is he supposed to lead you? So if you are not fostering those other areas and those other stabilities for him to lead, he will not be able to lead you. Mm. He won't be able to lead you. Mm. Um, mm. If you if you say you want him to lead you in every areas mentally, if you're constantly breaking the man down, how can he lead you mentally? How can he if you're not having those conversations of what is bothering you and the whole food? Let's take the whole the whole take on food. You know, you I say I don't want anything to eat, and he says, "What do you want to eat?" I don't want anything to eat, and he brings something to eat for himself, and he comes home, and I and I say, "But well, where is my food?" Well, you said you don't want anything to eat, ma'am. <laughs> no, I want something to eat. That's not fostering a um, relationship. That's not fostering a space where he can lead you mentally or emotionally. Mm. If anything, they'll just that get reminds into your plate. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> they that they ask where mine. They want yours. That reminds me of, of, of a notion that a, a lot of times, not every woman, obviously, but some women will say, well, if you love me, you should know, you know, or if you know me, you should know this, or if you know me, you should know that. And to some degree, I, I understand what's being said, but I, I love what, you, what you're saying is that, look, if you want these things in your life, if, if you want this man to fully be able to lead you, there is a part that you play as well as a woman. And that leads me to another question that we were talking to the guy and I, the guys and I were discussing about um, 
leadership in terms of okay so does a man supposed to lead better does a woman lead better does it matter like what is there a difference in their leadership styles when you go out and you go into the space of leadership right we it's obviously changed over the years how do you see that being different between men and women you know you're you're a mom and I call you Spider Mom for a reason because you've got many hats. You know, you've got you've got you on the wall one minute, next minute you swing into the other building. You know what I'm saying? You do a lot of things to be able to handle life. And I think that one of the things that I've taken from my mom is the ability to lead multiple things in her life. Now, how affected it is, I don't know. You know, she's done pretty well for herself. Your boy came out all right. I'm good. I ain't shot nobody. No, no, no. You know what I'm saying? But but I'm saying, like, from a from a female perspective, what we want to know as men, what is what is the 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 differences and leadership styles between men and women? And how can we learn from one another in the in those areas? Um, I think just thinking of the three different leadership styles or first to answer your question, as far as the, the leadership and going back to my mom, I think that, that 30%, right. I was born with the leadership style of um, leading naturally, leading emotionally. Um, I, I know how to lead emotionally. That's something I had to have given birth. I mm -hmm. had to naturally um, care for my kids. Um, I had to naturally lead them and um, teach them, um, foster relationships with them as they got, you know, as they went into uh, teenage years, I had to um, position them in a place um, where they trust me, even mm -hmm. as my children, right? As I do with the youth, I had to um, instill or influence a sense of purpose into them um, and, and remind them that they have purpose. I had to, um, guide them and the direction that they're going, making sure they're making good choices. So those leadership skills, those are all characteristics of leadership. I had to, you know, those are things that I was born with and I believe we're all born with. But you know, what I was not born with is the capacity to effectively man, um, to manage those, those areas, those same characteristics uh, to effectively manage and lead those groups. Because while I was able to do it, there was some areas that didn't have balance. So mm. I, needed some train, I needed someone to teach me, train me, continue to coach me, continue getting the education that I needed and the leadership that I needed, continuously getting that mentor, uh, that mentorship and continuously having that, um, those leaders, those other leaders who, has, who have max or maximized and excelled mm -hmm. in those areas to teach me how to do the same thing, to balance my family and work lifestyle. Um, those people to balance building those healthy relationships. Cause I didn't know how to do that. Financial management. Those are all part of leaderships that I really did not know how to do. I was doing the best that I can because in leadership, what I was born with didn't come with a manual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the, the difference between that there's like three different leadership styles i mean and i'll share them the last affair which is like the hands off i i would say most most guys that's the type of leadership style they have like hands off i know i'm the leader and um i i come with this level of authority to lead like this now everyone have their own leadership skill or their own leadership style i'm not saying all guys but most guys um have that you know they don't need to they don't need everyone exchanging. They don't want to work together in a group. They kind of want to get the stuff done. And, you know, they don't want to go through, let's go shopping and all the extra stuff. They want to get it done and right. be done. Um, I'm right. that democratic. I, I, I like everyone. Everyone achieves more. I want everyone to work together to get to the common goal. I, I want the exchanges of ideas amongst everybody. I, I want everyone to work together. And then... Um, there are those leaders that I like to call them or identify them as the alpha male. You know, I'm a leader. I am the leader. I am the leader of authority. I am the leader that um, that have the strength and the ability and, and they showboat that, that leadership still 
and not necessarily in the way that they're running around sharing it, but you know that they're the leader, whether you want them to be, they're like, okay, we know that they're the leader. Um, but there are right. leaders who actually lead. Um, and I feel, for example, Rudy, I would say you're that hands-off leader, get the work done behind the scene. And I, you know, as for me and most of the women that I, you know, congregate around, we're that everyone achieves more, let's all get together and get this done mm -hmm. type of lead. Mm -hmm. Those are the leadership styles that we have. Um, so men with leadership styles, they, they just want to be able to get the work done and lead. Right. They want to get right. the work done. Do you done. guys agree? You guys agree? I mean, and that was my question. What do you think, fellas? Fellas, you, you guys, you agree? know, you know, just get the work done? Yeah, I agree. I, you know, yeah. Wow, that's a big question. So I'm, I'm gonna keep it small, right? But <laughs> what I would say is this: this community. What I love about this community is that you know, guys have usually guys about competition, right? It, you know, I'm gonna compete against you, but you know, we've developed an environment where we believe in collaboration over competition, right? And yeah. we also believe that it's not just about getting that job done, but it's about enjoying the journey along the way. And, and most guys, I, I would agree with you, most guys, they kind of want to just get to that destination, right? Let's get in the car, let's pack, get what we need, let's get there, get it over. But what we have found, you know, is that it's much better to enjoy the journey because it's not really about getting to the destination. You know, we think it's about, you know, who we become in the process of the journey. So we're developing something a little bit different here. But I, I would agree that overall, typically, that that's the way it is. Guys just want get to get the job done. Yeah. I, I love it. And I think to add to that. Did we lose you? Okay. So uh, to add to the room, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We're getting you now. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um yeah, so no, to add to what you said, that's that's one of the biggest areas of what we would when it comes to men and how we define is leadership. And one of the things, and I, I have to affirm in this community, where we're working on changing the narrative because one of the things we want men to do is to be more enjoying the process. Because oftentimes, what it comes down to at the end of the day, men has a lower motility, motility rate than women because of the amount of times that we carry these burdens on our shoulders without no excitement, without no joy to alleviate that. So one of the things, so I, so I tend to agree, with, I agree with that, but one of the things we want to do is change that narrative when it comes to men, that it's okay to be happy with when, of not getting there quickly. Sometimes you're going to take a reroute. Sometimes you're going to take the roundabout journey. But as long as you get there and brought by the time and knowing that you're going to get there, you can enjoy the process on your way there. You can see that mountain, that mountain on the road. You can see that big, uh, that big, that lake on the side, that river flowing. You can see all these things because that's all a part of the journey. I, I think also part of that, too, is is understanding the respect that aspect, because as we know, that one of the things we look for in leadership is respect, right? And 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 so when you begin to understand your responsibility, not just towards yourself, but just towards the collective, that changes things. Like like for example, for me, if I'm leading a group of people and one person goes out of line, I can't be like, well, it was their fault. As a matter of fact, I, I remember going to an event and something happened. And the, the guy was like, well, you know, it was his fault because blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how does that make sense? It, it, it has nothing to do with whose fault it is. It has everything to do with the collective as a whole. And so I think like as a leader, there's a responsibility, there's a responsibility that comes with that. That for me, like it, it goes deeper than just, oh, look at me, I'm the leader. But it really goes into the collective of how strong are we together because of that leadership of that person because that person has stepped up to the plate and decided to take the the, the bull by the horn, if you will. And, and last thing I'll say is I remember seeing this picture where there's a leader that's leading from behind and then there's a leader that's saying, hey, follow me, right? 
That's two different styles. Some people like the fact that, hey, you go first. You you deal with it first. We'll follow you. Some people like the fact that, hey, we're going. But as we look behind, we see him holding us together, right? Two different styles. And some people may say one is better than the other. I don't know. But that that's my take on that. Um, and then we also Wayne's have a comment. comment. Yeah, we have a comment from Wayne. <clears throat> he said, most effective leader, most effective leaders um, are not the ones with authority, but with influence, influencing those who are being led and supported to be their best. And that comment reminds me of one time I was that working on this. Reminds me of one yeah, I was um, working on an event and uh, we had to move tables and chairs. So you had the big boss who was do this, do that, do this. And um, you had me who could see how things needed to go. And yeah. I would make suggestions on, you know, the way we need to set it up and uh, trying to use my influence to make it happen. And when it got to a point where they just needed to try it and fail, I just took a step back because I wasn't the mm. one who was in control. So sometimes leadership is about, you know, being uh, like Wayne said, uh, your influence and if you are not the one who's at the top leading and they don't move, sometimes you just have to take a step back. That's real. And I think you were saying uh, something, uh, 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 Dr. Love? No, I said, no. Um, I'm saying that's real because I can, I mean, when you think about leadership, leadership is the ones who can adapt to the environment. They don't mm -hmm, come mm -hmm. in. Yes, they have their way. You know, they have their idea. But the key component of leadership is to be able to adapt. It's to know when a situation may not go the way you had in plan, how you can pivot, how you can make the next move, or how to step back. Because oftentimes, when, the, the, when leaders fail is when they lack those abilities, when they couldn't make a call. And so... Yes, you got to be knowing how to be adaptable. And all it comes with is trusting your instincts and trusting yourself and having confidence that whatever the decision you make is going to breed a, a result that is based on your intention. It may not be good for everybody. It may not it may be, good, not be in the moment, good for everybody. But you, in the know, but you know that once you, once you do it, you are satisfied with the results. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. Um, Charmaine, I want to bring you um, back Charmaine, in the conversation, back. but we're having some little, um, having technical, some little issues, um, technical issues because I can hear the echo. Hear an echo. I can hear you, but there's an echo. But there's an echo. Is that better? Yes. Okay. All right. Awesome. So. Uh, speaking of leadership, we know that you have a leadership uh, uh, event coming up. Uh, we have just a few minutes left. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, how you know what was what was the what was the um, the reason behind that? Why did you you know feel like you wanted to put that together and tell us all about it as well? So yes, the Black Leadership Summit that is coming up on February seventeenth at the Boynton Beach Culture. Art Center um, that's located in 125 East Ocean Boulevard in Boynton Beach. So what was the brainchild behind the Black Leadership Summit? Um, the foundation. So I am the president and founder of Bold Foundation. Bold Building Opportunities for Leaders Daily is a 501, a 501c3 foundation that focuses on building opportunities for leaders, just as the acronym states. Um, so our focus is supporting, empowering, and educating leaders, whether you're inspiring leaders, whether you are um, a current leader, and where did that come from? Just as I stated earlier with the story regarding um, as a youth and, and my high school years, how I've always wanted to participate in leadership roles and didn't know how to participate in leadership roles, I found a niche, and that niche was identifying um leaders or potential leaders and helping them become those leaders and and 
unleashing whatever potential that they have so that they can be the best leaders. Uh, the previous speaker or the previous commenter mentioned something about influencing. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, part of leadership is influencing. And so influ part of influencing is you have that same willpower. You have the opportunity to influence. And if you don't have those tools and you don't have those strategies necessary to influence others, that potential is going to continue to be locked. And so that's where um, someone pulled it out of me and I wanted to give back and pull it out of someone else. And that's where the vision came from, the mission for the Bold Foundation came from. So the Black Leadership Summit is the kickoff of a three-day event with the Black Lux Picnic and Music Festival that will be held here in Palm Beach County. Friday will, of course, start with the Black Leadership Summit. We have keynote speaker Yvette Miley's. You have keynote speaker Kim Janey. Um, Yvette Miley's is the senior vice president of um, MSNBC. I always get it incorrect. She's the vice president of diversity and equity and inclusion for MSNBC or NBC Universal News Group. We have um, Kim Janey, who is the former Boston mayor. She is now the executive director of Impact Boston. Um, she will be also a keynote speaker. We have some powerhouses from Virginia, Virginia Baker, our administrator, um, Brenton Jones, Fly Jet Exclusive, the, the private jet um, black owned business. We have Adrian Archie, he is, billion dollar industry, pet industry. Um, he is the first black and probably the only black um, pet uh, franchisee that is currently out there, um, pet in mind. And his wife, Malia Archie, who is a um, attorney, she have her own law firm and she is also, she just launched her voice box studio, which is a podcast and content creator studio in Fort Lauderdale. So these there's some other powerhouses that will be speaking and they will be um providing breakout panel discussions um one-on-one -on -one interviews for small business executives for leaders and as i said um, future leaders if you are a leader if you are a business owner this is the avenue for you if you're young we want you in the building because right now we are in a movement and when i say young i i i mean Anything over 25 is young. Anything beyond 50, that's yes. still young. I qualify. I qualify, <laughs> yes. That is still young. We, so we have, um, I call the anyone that's over 65 OGs. So the OGs are getting ready to retire. They're, they're tired. They want to sit down and they want to pass the baton mm -hmm. down. And so if you are able to grab the baton and you are able to learn from some of these OGs and, and some who are not OGs, but have learned from OGs, have gotten the experience in the leadership and have been under the tulip of OGs for the longest. If you're able to get something from them to elevate the black community, um, anyone is welcome, but this focus is on the black community, the black businesses. Um, so we invite you, I am gonna give, um, of course, let's see, it's four of you on, um, I am, going to certainly give all four of you tickets to attend the Black Leadership Summit. And thank you for posting that. Um, and I'm also well, well, um, going I, to- I don't need a ticket. You know what I'm saying? I don't well, need a ticket. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all see that nice I don't need a ticket. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I will still give you a ticket so that you can bless somebody else with a ticket. Um, will do, will do. And as well as um, blessing two people on, um, blessing to people that's on the call and you guys can get their information and we'll make sure that they get their ticket if they would like to attend. We'll certainly um, awesome. make sure that they'll be able to attend. So we just, we believe that everyone who's going to be there is going to be there for a purpose, is going to be there for a reason. The conversations is going to be amazing. And um, we look forward to, look forward to all of you participating. If you can't participate, share the news. Where can so, we so, find the information about that? Oh, go ahead, Bobby. No, no, but let's get the information. Let's get the information. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, there is several areas you can find the information on that flyer that Rudy put up. Um, you can find that information there. You can also find it on the website at www.boldfoundation. That's bold-foundation.org. Um, you can certainly call me if you need any additional information. My number is 786 748 
1-800-273-0255. Okay, so right. let, let, let's let's backtrack just a second because people are gonna think this was rehearsed. This was rehearsed. It was not rehearsed. I had no idea. So let me get this straight. Did you say that there was a jet company? That is correct. <laughs> you mean the that's owner you of get in and jet. fly through the air? <laughs> Yes. A black owned company. Okay, so do you guys remember company. at the start of the show, I said before Charmaine came on, I said Wayne Moody needs to get a jet. Tell me you heard you, that. You did say that. You did say okay. that. You did say that. So, so listen, that was not rehearsed. I've never seen the flyer. Wayne Moody, Charmaine, Wayne, let's get the number back on the screen. Listen, Wayne Moody, he needs to get a jet. He needs a jet. 786-748-0255. Wayne, Wayne, take down the number. Get the number. <laughs> connect the number with back. Charmaine. You, everything begins with a thought. Now, Wayne, listen, I'm going to agree with you on this thought. Now, I'm not playing for flying. I'm not, I'm not paying. I'm flying with you on your jet. Call the number, Wayne, and get hooked up with a black-owned jet company. Not rehearsed. Hey, That's all I gotta say. I'm hey, done. Darren, talk I'm about done. Darren, talk about it. it's five of us. Darren says it's five of oh, us. Yes, yes. <laughs> we won't leave yes. you out, D. <laughs> she said we need five tickets. Oh. <laughs> I'll make sure you get five, get a ticket as well. <laughs> yeah, I will make sure you get a ticket as well. Um, oh my and, and god, Bridgman, I, I can't leave out Dexter Bridgman. He's he's the CEO of a media group down here in Miami, Florida. Um, he will be speaking, of course. We have the executive director of Trinity uh, Counseling Center because, you, you know, you leave one out. You got to say everybody. <laughs> Victor Harvey, CEO of Victor George uh, Spirits. You talk about a jet company. What about a vodka company? I say people say that I say it wrong. It's either vodka, vodka. Or vodka. Whatever. How do you say it? We drink it all. Vodka. I say vodka. That's what I say. <laughs> Hey, I, say vodka. Um, I say shots. That's all I say. Shots. I say shots. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> we um William McCormick, if anyone is you know interested in hearing um from FMU, he's the chairman of the board. We're in a tough position right now with education, and we can go on. That's a whole nother conversation. I am definitely someone that believes and wholeheartedly advocate for public education from the K through 12 sector to post-secondary. So um, William McCormick is someone mm -hmm. that we're going to hear from on the 17th. Um, Tanya Davis Johnson, she's amazing. Anything you want to know about certification in business, that is the business guru, government contracts. Um, she will be in the building. Gasford Smith, I call him the billion dollar, um, the billion dollar lawyer, because I don't think that man has a million dollar, under a million dollar case. So Joseph mm -hmm. Sanchez, <laughs> COO of the Palm Beach County School Board. So all of these powerhouses that are here to pour into us um, and to pour into the community, I, I say certainly um, tap in. And, and if you're not able to have, tap in, maybe look for the next event because I don't think this event will be recorded. Oh, all right. my goodness. Charmaine, 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 we appreciate you. We appreciate you. We value you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Listen, guys, February 17th, you heard about it. Let, yeah, let's give a round of applause. Let's give a heart level. 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 <laughs> Charmaine, we, we appreciate you uh, sharing your time with us tonight. Uh, bringing that valuable information. Guys, if something was said that resonate with you, reach out to Charmaine, uh, get get your tickets, check out that event coming up on uh, February 17th. Um, that is a powerful event. It's a powerful event. I mean, you're talking about Black-owned businesses, vodka and, and, and jets and all that, man. I, this is phenomenal. This is just phenomenal. Charmaine, we appreciate you. Stay, stay backstage. We'd like to chat with you for a few more minutes. We appreciate you once again. We're going to talk to her. Guys, Last minute thoughts. We're closing out. Any last minute thoughts before we close out? Shout out to Darian Hill once again, who is in the building now in the chat. What's up, D? Final thoughts. What was your what's your what's your what's your takeaway, Lamont? What's your biggest takeaway? Anybody uh, got a big takeaway? <clears throat> My biggest takeaway 
is that there are different styles of leadership mm-hmm. and then we just need to figure out our style of leadership and be the best leaders that we can be. I love it. I love it. Javon, what was your biggest takeaway for tonight? Rudy, you up next, brother. I was, my, my biggest takeaway was just learning that number one, of course, leadership. Can be, I never thought you was born a natural born leader. I never subscribed to that, but also understanding that there's a process and knowing that being around people, being around opportunity that can foster that leadership and seeing what it looks like, pleading example in everyday life is what be, builds leadership, not just ideas, but putting it to real action. So uh, that's one of my biggest takeaways. Excellent, excellent. And last, you got roots. Leadership power people i mean you got you know it, it's 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 about it's about empowering people and one thing that uh she said that i really i didn't even it didn't even cross my mind how much of how much work is involved as a mother for you to to really lead your children because it is in that leadership that eventually they become you know they become who they are and so being able to start that at a, at a really young age, we often forget kids are not young. They're, they're never too young to lead and to teach how to lead. And so I think that's important as a parent um, to be able to spend that time with your child or to have mentors around them that's going to help them be able to not just lead, lead others, but lead their lives. So I think that was a really big key for me. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, that was one of my takeaways I had on my list as well. So I'm going to move over to my other takeaway. That was my big one. But I'm going to my second big one, which was she said uh, leaders have the ability to build and maintain healthy relationships. I think that was key. Mm-hmm. Build and, and maintain healthy relationships. So with that being said, that brings us to the end of our show. We hope something was said that blessed your heart, inspired you to, to, to become a leader, to move to the next level, to grow, to develop. That's what this show is all about. This is, um, you know, one of the things that I, one of our coaches says, and I thought this is important because as we talk about leadership, you know, when you talk about leadership, it really talks about leading yourself. You got to lead yourself first. And leadership is about consistency. And one of the things my coach says, he says, you cannot consistently be who you are not. People are not going to mm. find a double minded, a double minded person. You cannot consistently be who you are not. So unleash your riches. This is what we do here. So tonight's inspiration injection comes from none other than Mahatma Gandhi. He says to be the change you wish to see in the world. That's our show for tonight. This is CF Talks, where we have heart-level conversations that actually lead to transformation. I'm Bobby B. That's Lamont Gwen, the producer. Javon, Dr. Love Jones, and Rudy LaRose. Darian Hill couldn't be here tonight, but he is the professor. And we appreciate you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week. And in everything you do, (laughs) in everything that you do, make sure you keep it. Hard level. Hard level. Hard level. Hard level. See you guys next week. And do it with confidence.